everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show! Today we have a really cute stash busting purse project for you. <laughs> you can make this in a solid color, variegated, or like I have using multiple colors left over from previous projects. This is a cute little size. It's great for a casual outing and it's got a real bohemian look to it. In fact, I made several of these in this style when I was a teenager and still learning how to crochet. I still have two of them and here they are. <laughs> This is one I made all in shades of green, and here's one I made in shades of brown. And you can also see that I mixed the textures of yarn I was using up in this particular bag as well, and I like how it turned out. I still like them both, I still use them both. Whatever you decide to use in your purse project today, it'll turn out cute as a button, I promise. So, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a cute little purse together. To make our pretty little purses, you can do what I'm doing and mix a whole bunch of different scraps together. You can use a solid ball of yarn, or you can use a ball of variegated yarn, but you do want approximately 150 grams in total of yarn for this project. If you're going to mix your scraps together, then make sure they're all the same fiber content. So all of my scraps are 100% acrylic, but you can play with the thicknesses. So for example, this um, is a very sort of loosely spun and kind of a fluffy yarn. This is a more tightly spun, uh, slightly thicker yarn than this one is. And this green, for example, it's difficult to see, is a chunky weight yarn. So my yarns are all either a size 4 or a size 5. But they're going to work together because I'm going to use the same hook and it's going to give the purse an interesting textural feel. And I like that look and if you do too, you might want to give it a try. This is a fun project to mix your yarns on. You're also going to need a pair of scissors a yarn needle, eight safety pins, paper clips, cis, stitch markers, whatever you find is helpful to mark your place, and we're going to use a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I9. Now if you're using DK weight yarn, so smaller yarn than I'm using here, a sort of a lighter weight yarn, then you might want to downsize your hook to a five millimeter or a four and a half millimeter hook, just because you want to have nice tight stitches. But once you've got all that together, we can get started. I've already gone ahead and made the first side. You're going to make two of these in total, but the second one will finish a little differently than the first. Basically, we're making an ever-increasing circle out to 12 rows. So I'm going to take you through this, and I'm going to show you how I'm changing color. I've used six different colors, so I made every color two rows wide, but if you've only got two colors or three colors, you can decide how much you want to use each color. And if you have very small amounts of yarn left, for example, if you've got little small scraps like this, that may dictate where and how much you use each color. I want to make each side identical. So if you've got tiny balls of yarn, you might want to split them into two so that you know you have the same amount to use on either side. Always start with the smallest amount of yarn if you're using scraps that you've got. So for me, that was this pink color and then gradually work out to the largest amount of yarn you have left if you're doing this using only scraps. If you're using only one color, I'll show you how to um, just keep going only using one color and not fastening off. And if you're using multiple colors like me, I'll show you how to change colors nice and easy and not have any knots showing. So let's get started. Grab your first color or if you're only using one color, grab your yarn. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And after you've chained one to secure your circle, you want to single crochet eight into it. So eight single crochet stitches into your cinch circle. Remember to work over top of your little short tail because that's how we're going to cinch the circle shut when we're done. Once you have eight single crochets in your circle, grab the little short tail and cinch your circle shut. You want a nice tight little center. Now we're not changing colors, so we're going to work directly into the first single crochet that we made in our circle. So if you're having trouble seeing it, count back eight <laughs> and find that first one that you made. There it is right there on the end. Sometimes they're hiding, especially when you make your circle nice and tight. And we're going to work two single crochet into each stitch around. Now I'm also going to try and work over my little short tail. You don't have to, you can weave it in at the end. Two single crochet into every stitch all the way around 
and at the end of row 2 you will have 16 stitches. At the end of row 2 you should have 16 stitches. If you are not changing colors you will work directly into the very next stitch and you will start your multiplier. But if you're not changing colors just pause for a moment. For those of us who are changing colors you're going to single crochet once into the next stitch. Again if you're not changing colors do not do this step and then you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch to close off your color. If you're not changing colors, do not do that. Snip your yarn, fasten off, and grab your next color. For me, that's going to be dark blue. Make a slip knot, and we're going to join our color. You see where you've, you've slip stitched off? There's that nice big open space. Back up one stitch, and join with a single crochet. Now for those of you who paused because you're only using one color, you will have stopped right back here. So into this next stitch you're going to work two single crochet as we are. So just like you never changed color for those of you who have changed color, two single crochet to start with in that first stitch and into the next stitch which is also where you fastened off, so that nice big open space right down there work a single crochet. So the pattern all the way around for row 3 is 2 single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and at the end of row 3 you'll have 24 stitches. You should have 24 stitches at the end of row 3. Row 4, we're going to work directly into the next stitch as you would every row if you weren't changing color, and I'm not changing color, so my very next stitch is the first stitch I worked of this row. I'm going to begin with two single crochets into it, and then I'm going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So the pattern for row 4 is two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next two, and that will increase our stitch count from 24 up to 32. At the end of row 4 you should have 32 stitches. If you're not changing colors you will work two single crochet directly into the very next stitch to start row 5 and follow that with a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So the pattern for row 5 is two single crochet into the first stitch or the next stitch, single crochet three times, so once into each of the next three stitches, so two, one, 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 two, one, 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 all the way around. I am changing color however so I'm going to show you that little trick again. If I'm changing color, I want to single crochet once into the next stitch, and all this does is just even out the amount of color in that row. So that gives me a nice even stripe of that color. I slip stitch into the next stitch to fasten off the row, snip my yarn, and fasten off. My next color is this dark green, so bear with me. I'm going to show you the color change one more time when my colors get lighter, just so you can see it if you're having trouble. But this is where I fastened off, so if I pull up on it, you can see there's the space that shows up underneath it. I want to join my yarn in the stitch just before that. So I'm going to join my yarn with a single crochet in that stitch. And if you didn't change color, this stitch here is where you would have worked the first increase of row 5. So I join with a single crochet and I single crochet one more time into that same stitch. You can see the space there when I pull up on my work. That's to start row 5. So two single crochet into the next stitch or into the first stitch of row 5. I single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. I'm working over my short tails but you can weave them all in at the end if you find that easier. And that is the pattern for row 5. Two single crochet into the next stitch for the first of the set, single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And at the end of row five you'll have 40 stitches. You should have 40 stitches at the end of row five. We work directly into the first stitch of that row to begin row six and we start with two single crochet in that first stitch. This is an ever increasing circle so if you've picked up on the pattern by now you'll know that this is two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And when my colors change to a brighter color I'm going to show you how you can use your stitch markers for an easy increase method. But For now, row six, two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, 
single crochet into each of the next four stitches, and at the end of row six, you'll have 48 stitches. I'm changing colors again. So to finish off row six, and you should have 48 stitches when you're done, I'm just going to single crochet into the next stitch. Doing this does not change my stitch count, so don't worry if you're changing colors along with me. It doesn't change your stitch count. So single crochet, slip stitch, fasten off, slip knot of new color on my hook, pull up on my knot off so I can see where I knot it off. I go to the stitch just before it, and if you're not changing color, this is the stitch that you would have worked two single crochets into to start your row seven. So I'm going to join my yarn here with a single crochet. So one single crochet. That counts as my first stitch of row seven. I'm going to single crochet into that same stitch again. So that's the first two stitches of row seven. One, two. And since we're in an ever-increasing circle, we're going to work a single crochet into each of the next five stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then single crochet once into each of the next five stitches. Repeat that all the way around, and at the end of row seven, you should have 56 stitches. At the end of row seven, you should have 56 stitches. I've pulled up on my loop here because I want to show you a nifty visual way of remembering where to increase that doesn't inclu include a whole bunch of counting. So I have gone around my circle and I have marked the first of every increase. So an increase is two single crochet worked into the same stitch. And you can see that there's two single crochet worked into that same stitch. So I've marked the first of those two all the way around, so there's another two worked into the same stitch. I've marked the first of that set and the first of that set, and I've gone around and I've done that with all eight of my stitch markers. So I know now when I'm working row eight, when I get to a marked stitch, that is my increase stitch. So I work two single crochet into that marked stitch, and then I continue. And if you want to be able to keep track a little easier without, and maybe only count your stitches at the end of every row, you can do this. So here is the first stitch that I need to increase into. So I remove my stitch marker, work the first two stitches of row eight, and before I take off, I'm going to put my stitch marker back in on that first of two stitches. So I've worked two single crochet into the same stitch. That's my increase. I'm going to mark that first of the two so I know when I get around to my next row, that will be an increase stitch. Then I just single crochet in each stitch all the way up to the next stitch marker. Now if you're counting, if you're using the counting method like I am, we're on row eight, so the stitch count or the increase count is two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next six. So two single crochet into the first stitch or the increase stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next six. And when you get to a stitch marker stitch, just take out the stitch marker, work your two increase stitches, and then put the stitch marker back in place on the first of those two, and that will remind you for the next row where you need to work your increase. So I've just worked my two increases, put my hook down, there's the second, there's the first, I'm going to mark the first with my stitch marker. And when I'm working row nine, I know that I need to work an increase on that stitch. So I hope that's helpful for any of you who like sort of a visual reminder of where to work an increase. Go ahead, finish row eight. You should have 60, oh, what are we at? 64 stitches at the end of row eight. And I'll catch up with you there. At the end of row eight, you should have 64 stitches. I'm changing colors again. So I single crocheted, slip stitched and fastened off. And I just want to make a quick note here that if you find your circle is rippling a little bit, don't worry about it. You can flatten it out if you want by putting your hands on it and just using the heat and weight of your hand to flatten it out a bit. But you will notice that my finished one ripples a little a bit. That's because I've changed up the weights of my yarn and probably my tension has changed a little bit too. Don't worry about it. It's not going to show when we're all done. And if it does still show and it kind of irks you, you can always steam block both sides before you put it together. But I wouldn't worry about it because while it's being used, your stitches are going to stretch out and you will not see any rippling in your bag. So don't let that bother you if you're finding that your work is rippling. I'm changing colors, but for those of you who are not 
uh, you're just going to work directly into the next stitch to begin row 9 with two single crochets. Let me just change colors and I'll catch up with you. To begin row 9, you're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch and you're going to single crochet into each of the next seven stitches all the way across. Or if you're using the increase stitch marker method, just increase every time you get to one of your stitch markers and then move it back to the first of those two increases so that you know where to increase for your next row. But row nine is two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next seven, repeat all the way around, and I'll catch up with you at the end. At the end of row nine, you should have 72 stitches. Row 10, we're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each of the next eight. So the pattern is two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next eight, and repeat, or work your two single crochet into the same stitch as marked by your stitch marker. And at the end of row 10, we should have 80 stitches. At the end of row 10, you should have 80 stitches. I'm changing color again, so I single crocheted and then slip stitched before I fastened off. If you're not changing colors, don't do that. Just get to your 80th stitch and pause. To begin row 11, we are going to work two single crochet into the first stitch, or the next marked stitch if you're keeping track with stitch markers. So it's two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next nine stitches. And you're going to repeat that all the way around for row 11. So two single crochet in the same stitch to start the set, single crochet into each of the next nine stitches, and at the end of row 11, you'll have 88 stitches. At the end of row 11, you should have 88 stitches. One more row of increase to go, so we're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next 10. Repeat that all the way around, and you should have 96 stitches at the end of row 12. At the end of row 12, you should have 96 stitches. If this is side one, you want to single crochet into the next stitch, this one here, and then slip stitch into the next stitch, that one there, as though you were changing colors, and then fasten off. So you should have something that looks like this when you're done. All of your stripes should be relatively even. Take a moment and weave in that short tail, and then you can start on side two. You want to make side two exactly or as close to exactly uh, the same as side one. But unlike side one, when you get to the end, you're going to single crochet into the next stitch, but you're not going to fasten off and you're not going to slip stitch. Instead, you're going to grab side one, flip it around so that the right side is facing outwards, and you're going to pair both of them together. Now you should have the exact same number of stitches running all the way around each side. There should be 96 stitches at the end of each row 12. And we're going to start to join them. So instead of snipping our yarn, we're just going to continue with the yarn we have on our hook. We're going to pick up the next stitch and pick up the corresponding stitch on the other side. So we're going to be working both sides together. And we're just going to single crochet through both sides. You're going to single crochet through each set of stitches for 72 stitches in total. So basically you're going to have 24 open stitches still left when you get around to the other side. So just take your time, pair up both sides, make sure you don't skip any stitches. Work on single crocheting through both sides together. And you want to do 72 stitches in total. When you've worked 72 stitches all the way around your purse, it should look something like this. You now have an opening. There are 24 stitches on both sides left untouched. 
and the rest of it is all nice and neatly put together. Now we're going to put a little rim around the edge of our purse. So we're going to switch now from single crochet to half double crochet. We're going to work half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, chain one, skip a stitch, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, chain one, skip a stitch, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and so on. Chain one, skip a stitch, and you're going to do this all the way around the mouth of our purse. When you get to the first edge, this is going to be the stitch that I actually skip. So I'm going to chain one, skip that last stitch, spin it around, and immediately start my half double crochets into the first available stitch on the other side of our purse. And same pattern. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet into each of the next two, chain one, skip one, and so on. When you get back to the beginning, work your last two half double crochets, chain one, and you're going to turn back to the front where the seam turns into your two half double crochet edge. So you're actually going to grab the first the little sort of stitch where your first half double crochet was placed and you're just going to slip stitch into that stitch. Snip your yarn, fasten off, and then take a minute to weave in your end. Once your purse is all together it should look something like this. You've got a nice big opening and you've got a little eyelet row across the opening that's going to give us a place to put our drawstring when we make it. But before we put in our drawstring, we want to create a shoulder strap. So you can take any color that you're using, and you can even do this in multiple colors if you want. We're just going to work a nice, simple, back and forth, single crochet strap. We're going to begin with a slip knot. We're going to chain 120. Once you have 120 chains, chain one more so that you've got 121. That's going to be your turning chain. Skip over that, single crochet into the very next chain, and single crochet into each chain all the way back to the beginning. So you'll have a total of 120 single crochets at the end of this row. Try not to twist your foundation chain row. When they're long, they sometimes get away from us. So in order to avoid skipping them, you want to try and make sure it's running flat over your finger or however you're working your crochet. If you're working on a flat surface, try to keep all of your chains nice and flat and facing upright. That way you won't skip any. At the end of row one, you should have 120 single crochets. The exact number doesn't matter all that much because this is just a shoulder strap. But what you should have is something that's nice and even and doesn't have any kinks in it. Um, no twists because you want your shoulder strap to be nice and flat and lay comfortably over your shoulder. So if you are going to continue with the same color, you're going to chain one, turn your work, single crochet into the first stitch, and continue single crocheting all the way back. But if you think you're going to run out of yarn like I am, <laughs> you can change colors here, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to snip my yarn, fasten off, Grab another color, make a slip knot, and join my yarn in the first stitch. I'm going to join it with a slip stitch, and then chain one and single crochet into the same stitch as joining. So you can work over your tails, you can leave them out and weave them in later. It's entirely up to you. There's my first single crochet, and then you just single crochet in every stitch all the way back across, and you should still have 120 stitches at the end of row two. We want to add at least one more row of single crochet to our shoulder strap. So at the end of row two, you should still have 120 stitches, and you have a couple options here. 
You can chain one, turn your work, and continue single crocheting back across that row if you're using the same color. If you want to change colors, you can fasten off, pull your tail back through your loop, and join another color like I did for row two, or if you have enough yarn left over, like I'm pretty sure I do here, you can sandwich the first row you made inside your entire strap. And we do this by slip stitching across the edge, slip stitching into that first chain. So this is the underside of row one here. So that brings us up to the top, or the bottom I should say, of what was row one. And that's the foundation chains there across the bottom. Chain one, single crochet into that same first chain and now you can single crochet into each chain all the way across. So this way you can make your strap look a little less scrappy <laughs> instead of having two rows of one color on one side of the original row, you can actually sandwich a color in between a whole, another color. I like the way that looks. This is what you'd call designing on the fly. <laughs> And one of the fun things that we get to enjoy when we're working on a scrap project. Whether you single crochet across the top or the bottom, you should still have 120 stitches. Now, my strap is three centimeters wide, and that's wide enough for me because I'm not going to be carrying anything terribly heavy in my purse. But if you intend on having a lot of heavy items in your purse, your, your strap is going to stretch out and it might end up being a bit too small for your shoulder. So you can go ahead and add a couple more rows if you want and make your strap wider. But if you're content with that width like I am, then cut yourself a long tail and fasten off. If you have any little short hanging tails like I do here, take a second and just weave them in across the inside of your shoulder strap. Next, we're going to attach our strap on the inside of the opening of our purse. So grab the end that has the long tail hanging and we'll do that side first. Take your purse, Flip it inside out so that you can see the bottom of that eyelet row we made. And right along the seam, you want to lay your strap in across the bottom of that eyelet row. So you'll see a little bit peeking through, which is fine. And we're going to sew the bottom of our strap across this last row of single crochet. So flatten it as best you can. You want to thread up that tail and we're going to sew by picking up pieces of the inside of a stitch and going through the entire stitch along the bottom edge of our shoulder strap. You're going to probably want to go back and forth a couple times because you want your strap on nice and securely. If you are using the same color of yarn that your that like the, the, the yarn color of your strap is the same color as the end of your purse, then you can go all the way through it if you want to make sure that it's extra secure. But this way, by picking up pieces of the insides of stitches, if you're using a different color like I am, it's not going to show through to the outside. And then once you've gone all the way across one way, you want to Double back, just to make sure it's on there nice and tight. Once you've finished sewing, you want to knot off your yarn. So just pick a piece of a loop or a stitch or something, and just make sure it's tying itself in a nice little knot. Tie it nice and tightly, and then you can weave that end up and down on the inside of your shoulder strap. We want to do the exact same thing on the other side of the purse. So you're going to cut a length of yarn and just knot it to the bottom corner of the other side of your shoulder strap. And I'm going to knot this a couple times. There we go. Make sure your strap hasn't twisted. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to lay it on the inside of your purse 
If you've got any short tails, make sure they're woven in before you start this process. And you're going to do the exact same thing by threading up that tail and sewing across the inside of the purse to the bottom of your shoulder strap. And make sure it's nice and secure before you knot off and weave in. Once you've got your strap on, the last thing we're going to do is create a little drawstring. And here's where you might want to have a little bit of fun with some beads if you've got some lying around. These are wooden beads. I actually hand painted these an eon ago and I found them in my stash because I've been going through my stash and I'm going to add them to my drawstring. So you can use ribbon or cord if you have it, but if you need to make a drawstring, it's really, really simple. Grab any color of yarn you like, start with a slip knot, and then chain 120. Once you've chained about 120, you can make it longer if you like, or a little shorter. Snip your yarn, and just pass that little tail through that last loop on your hook and pull nice and tightly. In order to string up your drawstring, find the center hole in the front of your purse and push the drawstring in through it. Weave it back and forth through those little eyelet holes we made in our eyelet row, all the way around. Your end will either come out the same hole that it went in, or the hole right next to it, depending on how many holes you have in your eyelet row. Doesn't matter as long as they're both out the front of your purse. And now you can string some beads on the end of your drawstrings. It helps if you've got beads that your yarn needle will pass through, so make sure you're, cho you're choosing beads that are have a big enough hole that you don't have any trouble threading them up in the first place. And once you've got both your beads on, You want to tie a knot, a big one, at the end of your drawstring. So I'm going to go ahead and tie at least three knots so that I know it's a big enough knot that my bead can't fall off. There we go. Perfect. Do the same thing to the other side. And then you've got a closing nice little closer at the top of your bag so that whatever you've got in it <laughs> won't come flying out when you're out on the run. And there you go, one cute little purse. This is a great project for those of us who have resolved to bust through our stashes this year. And if you're like me, you've got more in your stash than just yarn. I'm embarrassed to say that I think I have more fabric in my craft stash <laughs> than I do yarn. So recently, I made myself this patchwork skirt. I love how it turned out. I love the colors and the poofiness of it, but as you can probably imagine, I don't have a whole lot of other things in my wardrobe to match. So enter this fun little scrap busting purse pattern, and now I have an accessory that matches my new skirt. I wanted to take a moment and thank all of you who have recently popped into our Etsy shop and bought a pattern there to help support our show. And also a big thank you to everyone who has popped over to our Teespring shop and bought a tote bag or a t-shirt. We thank you so much for your support because it really goes a long way in helping us out here on the Jade and Stitches show. And that's it for this week. We will see you again really soon. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody. Bye!